Okay, so it's a while since we've uh, discussed soldering on the DVD, and I thought today that we'd take a look at some basic soldering techniques and sort of introduce, for those of you who aren't familiar with soldering techniques, what's involved and how easy it is to solder something together. I'm going to build today a little kit from Seven Models. It's, it's uh, kit number D2, a plate layers hut, which is really, really straightforward to build. So whilst the instructions recommend using a straightforward standard superglue, I think that actually soldering is a great way to introduce you all to some of the basic techniques. So with that in mind, let's get inside the pack and get started. To cut parts from the fret, you can use one of three tools. A Stanley knife if the etch is very thin and parts are delicate, a pair of small cutters, again if tabs are fine, or a pair of tin snips which are better for larger parts. I'm choosing the small cutters for this kit because they avoid distorting parts in the fret, and much like a plastic kit, all parts must be freed before the build is started. Okay, so now all of the components are cut out and laid in front of me, um, it's a good opportunity to familiarise myself with the instructions, which are, as you'd expect from a uh, kit that has been designed on the computer, very clear and concise and easy to read. Many of these components have still got the little uh, tabs left in place and the next stage of course when you're building a kit is to make sure that everything fits together properly. So I'm going to get rid of them and there's a few ways you can get rid of tabs on kits. Um, if it's a plastic kit, for example with sprues it's easier to use a little sanding stick because it can cut through quite easily. But with brass I tend to find that a good selection of needle files does the trick quite nicely and um, I've got a selection here. For instance, if you were looking to remove a tab on a section which is a, a sort of a curved profile, you could use a needle file with a curved profile like that. Most of the time though you'll find that a flat needle file like this will do the job nicely. Now these are cut in different ways, you can have um, ones that have got one cut, two cut, depends on the number of cuts for a uh, particular file. But in essence, uh, the important factor to remember is that um, the more cuts it has, the smoother the profile of the blade is. So uh, if you want to remove a tab on a very thin piece of etch like this, it's better to have something that's not too aggressive so that you don't start to bend or deform the etch in place. So something like that, which is a, I think it's a three cut, yes, three cut file, will do the trick quite nicely. You can pick these up uh, at your local exhibition or with many of the retailers in the magazine pages of BRM that advertise. So check them out, get yourself a set if you haven't got one already. So I've got everything cleaned up, instructions are in front of me and it's basically just a question now of soldering everything up. So I'm going to start, as the instructions indicate, with the outside of the building and you'll note that in this little uh, plate layers hut we've got two windows and these are a two-part piece uh, which are, need to be soldered together. So to do that, I'm going to, as you can see, they are very small, I'm going to use something that's called a flux. Now a flux is an acidic um, material which can be either in a fluid, very fluid format such as this. This is a soldering flux from Wilder, uh, reference SF01. Or you can get it in a slightly thicker format um, such as this one. If I can just get it open, there we are. This is more like a, a paste format. Either way, when you apply heat to this, what it does is it will create a bit of an acidic etch into your metal when you are soldering your piece into place, and it gives the solder a better hold into the brass itself, and it also means that you can use less solder for a given joint. With that in mind, I'm going to get started with some of this uh, soldering flux. I'm going to use the liquid one on this. I'm just going to use a little brush here, a very small one, and uh, just apply a tiny bit around the edges of the window frame, like so. Now it's important that we keep the half etch on this side um, because this is going to be the inside of the building. With that in place, we can now take our little window there, which you can see is beautifully etched, very, very fine, intricate detail. Um, it, does ha it is quite handy to have a set of uh, tweezers at this point. And uh, I'm just going to put that face down into the little etch, half etched groove there, make sure that it's in place. So there's a variety of solders on the market. Some have got a um, flux core, some haven't. If you're using flux, it really is irrelevant. I'm going to approach the iron and the solder at the same time on this component, and I'm just going to start off on the top right-hand corner here. So solder is now down on the component. I'm going to apply a tiny bit of heat, and there we are. 
that's one uh, corner into place and you can see that the parts lifted a bit so this is what's called uh, a tack so we've got that into place now we can refine it by applying a little bit of pressure downwards with the uh, tweezers and uh, applying the heat we can just move our component into place like so just make sure that everything lines up correctly and you can see with applying the heat and that flux we can just flow that solder round two sides already and you'll note also that I'm now working on a piece of wood. Don't work on a plastic table or anything that's likely to melt. Just work on something that will absorb a little bit of the heat um, without taking away too much. So for instance, a metal surface, if you're soldering on a metal surface, it's likely to draw a lot of heat out of your soldering iron and therefore you'll need to put more heat into your components as, as a result. A little bit on the other corner there, like so, and just work it round. Now the more solder that you apply, the more you have to clean up. So it really pays to just apply the minimum amount required, make sure that you get everything neat. And hey presto, we've glued our little frame into place. Okay, so with those little window frames now soldered into place, uh, we can do a little test fit there on the back of the etch to make sure that they look okay. Uh, which they do fit nicely into place there and uh, well building the rest of the kits merely just replicating those same techniques that I demonstrated approaching the iron to the solder which is already on the component making sure that everything's clean and of course there's a little bit of folding required as well now to do the folding I'm just going to use a steel rule everything here that you can see on the kit has a half etch line which makes folding of components really easy but to make sure that you get a nice crisp fold along the edge just align them into place at the back there like so and uh, fold it over. Sometimes it can help using the back of a pair of tweezers just to make sure we get a crisp fold as well. Let's get folding and soldering and uh, we'll catch up when the kit's built. I prefer to use a fluid flux for parts but if something needs to be tilted at an angle and it might run the flux paste is best used here. Apply a little 60-40 tin lead solder and approaching it with the iron is a simple way to guarantee a solid join. So the chimney is made of about five components in total, each very intricate and fine and they all need soldering on top of each other. <clears throat> this can create a little bit of a problem when it comes to soldering because you can't always get access to the soldering iron under each individual component. So I'm going to demonstrate a technique known as sweating. Now what we're going to do here is uh, just apply a little bit of solder to the top of the chimney here, a very small amount like so. With that soldered into place I'm just going to apply a tiny bit of solder flux to the top of the chimney and then uh, on goes the little chimney cap. It's probably easier to use some tweezers at this stage. And I'll try and work that into shape so that it looks square with the other components. A lot of soldering is just fiddling with parts to get them to sit properly before you actually apply the heat really but um, there we are, and I'm going to uh, hold that in place with the um, needle file as I apply the heat, just to make sure that it all stays square and in place where it should do. Apply a tiny bit of solder to the underside of the iron to transfer some heat through the iron down onto the chimney, and make sure that's all worked around. Take the heat off again, and that's all set. And there's another chimney cap to place over the top of that and just dip that straight in the flux, there we are. And this one goes right on the top in the centre there. And then we've got this little tiny chimney pot which sits on the top just like so. So what I'm going to attempt to do is hold all of these into place whilst I apply the heat and hopefully nothing should slip out of place. Let's hit that with some of the heat. You get a good hiss from the solder as it takes with the flux and you can start to see the solder seeping up through the top of the joints and what we're looking for when we apply the heat of the soldering iron is a nice shiny surface which means that the uh, solder is taken properly and evenly all the way around. One chimney into place, a very intricate part as you can see, all the different little components there on, on top of each other but um, there you go, that is the technique of sweating. This little kit from Seven Models is a very therapeutic build. It's not taxing if you're a beginner to soldering and better still because it's not a model with working parts it's less critical if you find you haven't been as accurate with some of your soldering. Even if it doesn't turn out as planned, you could easily hide some of your mistakes by a little ivy on one side of the building. To see how an etch building can be painted, download the January 2019 issue of BRM from pocketmags.com slash BRM.